Rest periods are one of the most underappreciated strength training variables out there. Everyone focuses on load, volume, intensity, and other parameters, but when it comes to rest periods, most people don't even have a clue as to what the proper rest times look like for their training goals. They treat their workouts like a race, and whipping through the workout is some sort of victory. In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to rest properly between your sets and get the most out of your training efforts based on your goals. Before we do this though, let's first establish the most important systems of the body that strength training utilizes. By doing this, we can deduce how to recover optimally and determine the right rest periods. Okay, so your body has three metabolic energy systems it utilizes based on the type of activity you're doing and the duration. These are the ATP, lactate, and aerobic energy systems. Now, I'm not gonna explain all the scientific ins and outs of these systems, but to help you understand these in quick and simple terms, let's use running as an example. If you're doing long distance running, the predominant energy system you'd use is the aerobic system, which is designed for longer duration and sustained energy output at lower intensities. If you're pushing yourself over shorter distances of say 400 meters, you'd be using predominantly the lactate system, which is designed for this level of output. And if you're doing 100 meter sprints and required immediate and big bursts of energy at higher intensities, you'd be using the ATP system. Now the problem is that most people go into the gym treating their strength training like an aerobic activity instead of an anaerobic activity, and hence they don't rest appropriately. They rely on things like their speed of breathing and their heart rate when these aren't the right indicators of recovery for the actual systems involved in their training. For instance, the average set in the gym for building muscle mass lasts between 40 to 70 seconds. And if you're doing max strength efforts, these last for less than 12 seconds. So if we apply the energy requirements of strength training, most of the rep ranges we use to build muscle and strength heavily rely on the ATP system as a major energy source and to a lesser extent the lactate system. The problem is that these energy systems, particularly the ATP system, require much more recovery time than our longer duration aerobic energy system. Check out the following table which illustrates this well. As you can see, your ATP gets replenished to 50% at the 30 second mark. However, to be anywhere near full recovery of ATP energy stores, two to three minutes rest is required. And this is just the metabolic system we're talking about here. Another major system involved in strength training is the nervous system. Although neural recovery has not received as much attention as metabolic recovery in the research, most sources quote neural recovery to be between five to six times longer than metabolic recovery. Taking this into account, the following table shed some light on why max strength and power athletes, such as Olympic lifters and power lifters, can take up to 10 minutes to recover between sets of their major lifts. If you look at the table properly, you'll notice there's an inverse relationship between reps and rest periods. The lower the reps, the longer the rest you should take, and the higher the reps, the shorter the rest period required. So if you're trying to build max strength, for instance, don't rush through your workouts and instead take more than enough rest. And if you're trying to increase metabolic hypertrophy, you'll need to take around one or two minutes rest between your sets and monitor your breaks accordingly. Your rest should also be kept consistent from set to set and from workout to workout on any given program that's based on your goals. If you're resting for 60 seconds between sets on one day of a program and then resting for three minutes on another, you're going to get very different strength numbers and results each time. Remember too that the table represents a range of rest. Hence, you should experiment based on your own individual recovery and strength scores. If you're in doubt, take more rest. You're probably starting to recognize by now that most people's issue around rest breaks is that they don't take strength training for what it is and apply the necessary longer recovery times. Again, if you think that picking up a heavy load is okay because you've caught your breath or your heart rate is lowered, then you're shooting yourself in the foot. It's not cardio training. The recovery signs for strength training are different and less obvious. And if you don't learn to fully recover between sets and accommodate the relevant systems of your body, you're gonna produce excessive fatigue. And this will inhibit your ability to produce full strength, it'll stagnate your progress, and it will also greatly increase your risk of getting hurt. Yes, your chance of injury goes up sharply, and this is because your skill goes down when your fatigue goes up, meaning that your ability to maintain correct exercise technique gets exceedingly harder under excessive fatigue. Now, there are also some other factors that you should consider when it comes to rest breaks, and I'll get into these right now. One factor to consider when it comes to rest periods is body size. Heavier individuals require longer rest periods than lighter people because their bodies have to work harder to support their greater body mass. This is especially relevant if your body weight is over 100 kilograms or 220 pounds. Heavier people can generally lift heavier loads too, which will have a greater impact on their rest breaks and their recovery cycle. Speaking of bigger, another factor to consider is exercise size. The bigger the exercise you do, the more rest you'll need to take due to the overall stimulation being higher. And this means you should be taking more rest for your bigger compound lifts like your deadlifts, squats, presses and rows, 
and less rest for your isolated exercises like your curls, extensions, and things like that. More muscle mass used equals more rest required. And a final factor to consider when it comes to rest periods is that these can go outside of normal parameters when there's more advanced techniques being used. For instance, training protocols like drop sets, giant sets, and other advanced techniques have rest breaks purposely cut back within the program to enhance the stress placed on the body. And this is fine, but only if you're at this level and you're doing these techniques in a safe and controlled manner. You should now be able to see if you're turning your strength training sessions into aerobic circuits and generating unnecessary fatigue. You should also be able to see how many people out there rush through their training sessions to get in and out of the gym as quickly as possible. And this mentality is not helped by the propensity of the fitness industry and commercialized gyms in promoting short workouts and circuit training as strength classes. If you're serious about getting bigger and stronger, you need to prioritize it and give it enough time. The irony about trying to rush through your training sessions and save time is that it actually ends up costing you more time in the long run. And this is because you're not recovering properly between sets enough to express your full strength potential, but you're also much more likely to get hurt under the unnecessary fatigue. If you're trying to build size and strength, you need to attack every set at 100% and not do any junk reps where you go through the motions under fatigue. By not adequately recovering between sets, you'll likely require more time in the long run to build up your strength and your muscle mass because you're not able to consistently stimulate your muscles properly with the right amount of overload. Remember too, that if you're training to build muscle mass, it's not about getting a pump, a burning sensation, or sweating as much as possible and turning it into a cardio session. Again, you're trying to get as much overload out of each set as possible at your target rep range. Take the time to rest properly and use a stopwatch or timer to monitor yourself. If you're still short on time, one tactic you can use is to superset your exercises with those of the opposing muscle groups so that they can fully recover while you're working the other areas of the body. For instance, you could pair bench press with rows, deadlifts with overhead presses, etc. It's not possible, I repeat, it's not possible to train against high resistance or produce significant improvements in muscular development, strength and power using unmethodical short rest periods. Use the reps and rest table I provided earlier and remember to align your rest periods with your training goals, not your feelings on the day. That's all for this video. Start taking your rest breaks more seriously and you'll start to see much better results from your training. Feel free to like this video if you found it helpful. And before you go, make sure you read the description to this video and feel free to drop a comment if you have any feedback or questions. If you want to keep up with our content, simply subscribe to the Performance Revolution channel so you don't miss any of our future training and information videos. Thanks and see you next time.